A very suspicious blast took place in northern Pakistan, targeting a bus carrying Chinese engineers to a project that is part of China's Belt and Road Initiative running through Pakistan. That particular leg is called the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, and it has been attacked in the past by U.S.-backed armed insurgents, uh, mostly in southwest Pakistan in a province called Baluchistan. I am going to give you the background of this Baluchistani insurgency. I'm also going to explain how this uh, campaign of state-sponsored terrorism, not the so-called Build Back Better World initiative announced by Biden recently at G7, is how the U.S. really plans on dealing with China's Belt and Road Initiative. Let's get started. This is an article from ABC News Australia. Pakistan boss blast kills 13, including nine Chinese CPEC workers. China demands punishment as conflicting reports emerge. And of course, the West wants this to be as ambiguous as possible so that attention fades and no one really figures out what happened. It will just be written off as a mysterious blast, even if they confirm that it was absolutely a terrorist attack. Uh, all the way buried at the bottom of ABC Australia's article is Chinese nationals targeted in the past. Uh, and then they admit that there have been all of these attacks, including one on a hotel in Baluchistan where the Chinese ambassador to Pakistan was actually staying. He wasn't in the hotel at the time of the blast, uh, but that was clearly an attempt to kill the Chinese ambassador to Pakistan. So that's what these armed militants are doing. And this is all about stopping the Belt and Road Initiative in Pakistan. We see similar campaigns like this all over the world with uh, US backing uh, documented behind every single one of them. In Myanmar, here in Thailand, and Xinjiang, inside of China, there, there was a militancy that the US was sponsoring to try to disrupt the Belt and Road Initiative passing through there. Uh, and I wanna show people the background of the US sponsoring Baluchi insurgents in case in case you don't believe that. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you is a video by retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. This was after uh, the U.S. had invaded Afghanistan and here he is in Washington explaining why the U.S. should be backing armed militants in Baluchistan in southwest Pakistan. Uh, he'll describe Pakistan as pirates for not allowing U.S. forces to move freely through their territory on their way to U.S.-occupied Afghanistan. Truly a, a stunning display of U.S. exceptionalism. Uh, but what he's basically saying is he wants to uh, carve off Balochistan from Pakistan so that U.S. forces have a U.S. client regime with access to the ocean so they don't have to deal with Pakistan. This is what they were talking about. Let us start with the incontrovertible fact, and that is that Balochistan is occupied territory. It never willingly acceded to Pakistan, does not now wish to be part of Pakistan. If a plebiscite or referendum were held tomorrow, it would vote to leave Pakistan, as would every province and territory west of the Indus River. Instead, we face, we support Pakistan, their oppressor, their oppressor, a state that actively supports and arms terrorists and insurgent movements in Afghanistan that kill and maim our own soldiers. The Pakistani government is not our friend. It is not the friend of the Baluch or the other subjugated peoples west of the Indus River. The Durand Line, of course, which divides Pakistan and, our, and Afghanistan, is artificial. It divides people who want to be together. Mr. Chairman, my time is running out, so let me simply say this last thing. 200 years ago, one of our greatest presidents faced a problem. The Barbary pirates refused to let our ships pass in peace, so we paid tribute money to let our goods pass. Thomas Jefferson put a stop to that. Today, we are paying tribute money again, this time to the Pakistani pirates, to let our goods pass to Afghanistan. Mr. Chairman, I'm looking for a Thomas Jefferson. And then here is a 2012 article in the Huffington Post, and this is about Ralph Peters, 
even though he wants to, you know, liberate Baluchistan from Pakistan, here he is admitting that these insurgents are basically uh, a basket case movement, that they're constantly infighting, and that if they were given their own country, it would be run straight into the ground. And the, the prospects of them ever succeeding in independence from Pakistan were, were very unlikely. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they aren't going to still arm and back the insurgency for the sole purpose of disrupting and setting back Chinese projects in Pakistan. Then there is this article from 2011, The National Interest by Selig Harrison. It's called Free Baluchistan. And here they say to counter Islamism in nuclear Pakistan, the United States should do more to support Baluch insurgents. And I can't really think of a better way to make a situation more dangerous in a nuclear arms country you're, you're worried about than creating an armed insurgency inside of it. That sounds completely insane. But that isn't the real reason they were talking about doing that. If you, we, we come down here to the bottom, he gives it all away. Most important, it should, and he's talking about the United States, should aid the six million Baluch insurgents fighting for independence from Pakistan in the face of growing ISI repression. They're talking about uh, Pakistan's security services. Pakistan has given China a base at Gwadar in the heart of Baluch territory. So an independent Baluchistan would serve U.S. strategic interests in addition to the immediate goal of countering Islamist forces. So Islamist forces is the pretext. Uh, blocking China is the actual agenda here. Let's look at this on the map. Uh, here is Pakistan. Here is Afghanistan. Here is Gwadar port and the corridor goes from Gurarpur all the way to northern Pakistan, west of the Indus River. We just heard Ralph Peters talking about how everything west of the Indus River should be peeled off from Pakistan and controlled by a U.S. client regime, which, which would effectively end uh, China's Belt and Road Initiative in this region. You could also see how U.S.-occupied Afghanistan right here has no access to the ocean, but if there was a Baluchistan client regime here, then it, then it would. So you see how nice that all works out for the US. Uh, then there was this bill introduced in 2012. So you can see around 2011, 2012, there was this huge push for uh, the US backing of this armed insurgency in Balochistan, uh, openly backing it because they've been covertly backing it all along and they still are. Uh, and this is Expressing the sense of Congress that the people of Balochistan, currently divided between Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan, have the right to self-determination and to their own sovereign country. So this would be the United States government uh, redrawing the, the map in that region. And then, of course, drawing Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan into this conflict with these Baluch insurgents, just like the U.S. is doing with the Kurds in Iraq Syria, Iran, and Turkey. Same, same concept, different part of the world. It's very clear that the U.S. intends to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative with a concerted campaign of global terrorism. They have militant groups all around the world that they are sponsoring and arming and backing uh, to foil Chinese progress in building these networks, building these infrastructure projects. And you have to think about it. Uh, a lot of people in Balochistan have these concerns that they lack development, and they most certainly do. Uh, China bringing the China-Pakistan economic corridor through Balochistan is going to help solve that. And so the, the actual solution to the hardships that the people in Balochistan face is being blocked by the U.S. who claims they're going to save the Balochistan people from the Pakistani government by granting them their own uh, rump state so when we see these buses being blown up in Pakistan full of Chinese engineers, that's what's going on. The U.S. is trying to block the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative through terrorism. So we need to keep an eye on this. And we need to look at everywhere the Belt and Road Initiative is passing through and ask ourselves, are these just isolated political conflicts playing out or is this being orchestrated by the U.S. to disrupt and destroy the Belt and Road Initiative? If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for all of the articles and documents that I went over in this video, as well as for ways you can help 
support my work, uh, like by becoming a Patreon member. Through Patreon, you can help support my work month to month. Uh, there, are, uh, there is some extra content for my Patreon supporters. There's also lines of communication where we can exchange ideas and kind of build a community around this work. And to everyone helping me in absolutely every way, thank you so much. I could not do this without that support. I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching.